Today, we take our electrified world for granted. Energy that powers our needs is as close as the nearest outlet. According to legend, the man who made it happen was born in Croatia in 1856, at the stroke of midnight, during an electrical storm. Tesla is immediately associated with thunder and lightning, with electricity. Tesla began his career as an electrical engineer with a telephone company in Budapest in 1881. One day, as he was walking through a park with a friend, Tesla suddenly envisioned a groundbreaking concept for a new electric motor and drew it out in the dirt. This simple illustration became the patent for the induction motor, which would go on to be the standard electric motor for the world. It's used for everything, from tools and appliances, to hybrid cars, to industrial plants. The induction motor works by energizing coils of wire placed around a stationary frame, called a stator. This induces the current in the coils onto a rotor. The alternating current in the coils causes the poles of the magnetic fields around them to change between north and south. The resulting attraction and repulsion with the coils as they alternate causes the rotor to spin. And the exact same ideas that Nikola Tesla came up with a hundred years ago are still used today in induction motors such as this one. The motor is made of two parts, the rotor and the coil. Within the coil, a north-south magnetic field rotates, and as a magnetic field rotates, the rotor follows it. Just like it did a hundred years ago when Nikola Tesla made the first prototype. In 1884, at age 28, Tesla moved to America with little money and only a letter of recommendation from his boss to Thomas Edison. The letter simply read, I know two great men, and you are one of them. This young man is the other. Edison hired the brilliant young engineer, and eventually asked him to redesign his company's electric generators for a $50,000 bonus. After Tesla developed a number of enormously profitable new patents, he asked Edison for his bonus. Edison says, you got to be kidding me. You got a lot to learn about an American sense of humor, and he doesn't give him the $50,000. And Tesla turns around immediately and says, well, Mr. Edison, I resign. So began a lifelong feud between the upstart young genius and the established inventor. Tesla leaves Edison's, and he was digging ditches in New York City for a year, a very, very dark time. All of his dreams are in shambles at this point. While toiling to feed himself and raise capital for new inventions, Tesla was appalled at the web of power wires strung up in the city. The whole system was a nightmare of cables and wiring overhead. Matter of fact, in some areas it even blocked out the sun. The electrical system he found deficient was called direct current, or DC. Edison, Tesla's former employer, was a major investor in DC power. Tesla knew there was a better way and was determined to invent a new system that will become the global standard. Alternating current, or AC. Here's a direct current cable that would carry about a million watts to light a typical New York City block. Using alternating current in Tesla's AC system, a small wire such as this could power the same amount of homes. Same amount of power, just look at the difference. The difference between AC and DC power is all about how electricity or electrons flow. For DC current to work, there must be a continuous and direct flow of electrons along a wire from negative to positive poles. When power is applied, electrons, as signified by the red band, move to the work, do the work, and then come all the way back to the generator. The problem with this process is that the electrons 
encounter resistance along these wires. It's difficult for electrons to travel these great distances. So most of the energy in the system is lost in the wire. Well, the way Thomas Edison envisioned his system, he would have to put a power plant just about every mile to keep the voltage steady along his DC power grid. In 1887, Tesla filed seven US patents for another more efficient and cheaper power system called alternating current. What Tesla discovered in his AC system was it was not necessary to send the electrons all the way to the work and back again. In fact, he alternated the current, sending it back and forth. Tesla developed a system of AC generators that alternated electric current between negative and positive poles at 60 cycles per second. By sending AC through a transformer with virtually no power loss, he could step up the voltage and lower the current so that AC could be efficiently transmitted hundreds of miles further than DC. Millionaire entrepreneur George Westinghouse thought Tesla's inventions could be the key to long distance power transmission. He purchased the patents for $60,000 and a healthy share of stock in the Westinghouse Corporation. If the new AC system was successful, Tesla would be a rich man. Nikola Tesla became a citizen of the United States in 1891. The same year, an all-out current war erupted between his AC and Edison's DC power. Edison launched a propaganda campaign to show the dangers of AC. The public they had rather grotesque uh, experiments where they would take animals and electrocute them with alternating current. Edison convinced New York State to use Tesla's and Westinghouse's AC power for the very first electrocution in 1890. A reporter called it a gruesome spectacle, far worse than hanging. Edison dubbed the technique Westinghousing. Whether it was electrocuting animals or electrocuting prisoners, the thrust was, this is something you don't want in your house. In 1893, despite the bad press, Tesla and the Westinghouse Corporation won the bid for illuminating the Chicago World's Fair, the first all-electric fair in history. Edison, who made an unsuccessful bid, was frustrated over losing this opportunity and refused to let Tesla use his patented light bulbs. So Tesla needed to come up with a, a new light bulb, make 250,000 of them in six months' time to light the fair. Edison's bulb had a screw base at the bottom. He patented the whole method of powering the bulb through this screw base and how to seal the vacuum off inside. Tesla's solution was to have a ground glass stopper in the bottom of the bulb. The wires passed through the stopper and he was able to manufacture a bulb that didn't interfere with Edison's patents. Tesla was able to beat Edison at his own game by producing a lamp that was more easy to manufacture and he was able to, to do so in a short amount of time. On May 1st, 1893, President Grover Cleveland pushed a button and more than 200,000 of Tesla's incandescent lamps illuminated the fairgrounds. It was a monumental success and ushered in the era of modern electric lighting. Tesla was held the mastermind and the genius behind making this possible and his name was known around the world after this event. Tesla, filled with confidence after this victory over Edison, believed AC would be the current of the future. In order to prove it, he would try to harness the power of one of the world's greatest natural wonders.